Hello everyone, Karl Shudkun here. So, we are in Bible series, and we're talking about the Biblical narrative, but we did Bible Basics, so this is Bible Basics 106. Last episode was Bible Basics 105, and we covered why the Bible is written. So, speaking cumulatively over this series, I've been trying to build up your knowledge on the realm of reasoning within which the Bible exists. So, what it is talking about, who's framed the narrative, the authorship, how to authenticate it. Why is it important to believe it? How is it structured? How are they trying to teach you? What are the lessons embedded in the teachings, encrypted in some of the symbolic language, the symbology and the teaching etiologically that we as Christians or non-believers, provided you're a Gentile, not a Jew, or you're a reprobate, not an elect, trying to gain understanding into the cause, trying to be won over against the popular backdrop of secularism. So with that being said, uh, today I want to cover where the Bible was written. So I have my whiteboard today. And I'm going to try my best to incorporate this into today's lesson. So let me just give a headline. I said Bible Basics 106. Just give me that. Bible. There you go. Excuse the handwriting. Bible Basics. One zero six. So we are Bible Basics one zero six, and we've covered who. So as in who wrote the Bible? We've covered the apostles. We've covered the disciples. We've covered in great detail how we've moved across languages. How we moved from Hebrew. How we moved from Akkadian. How we moved from Greek. How we moved to Latin. How we moved to Old English, and how we've moved across in seven hundred plus languages. And we've also covered the language of literacy. The literary the literal, sorry, literary devices involved in the text, which are meant to emphasize certain points and they embellish the truth of the narrative so that you can grasp a hold of some of those basic concepts. So the science act as revelations to truth, the same way which facts are only a shadow of truth. The stories are only the beginning of salvation and only reveal themselves to you as you impress upon yourself the ideology and the ideas of the divine being so that being said bible basics where it's right here where big question mark where in the beginning we start with eden with adam and eve and we have the covenant and we have the snake and we have this initial idea of fallout and sin and we come across the idea of the flesh being weak and the spirit being willing so we encounter man in the beginning we had god god was the word the word was god and god let there be light and so on and so forth and then genesis 2 that's when we have the encounter of the humans ourselves so we are the ultimate cause of god there was the efficient cause which is god the ultimate cause the universe and from that we were begotten human beings and where was this believed to be where that's the important question so god in the kingdom of kush is believed to be in africa so that's one point to start. We write Africa. Where was the Bible written? Africa. That's place one. Where in Africa? After the account of, Af of uh, the Garden of Eden, we then have encounters to move to do with Egypt. Egypt, Egyptology, hieroglyphics, the ancient Egyptian kingdom was renowned for its cultural items, was renowned for its rich history and the historicity of some of the documents which are kept in the pyramids, by the pharaohs and the sphinxes, and so on and so forth. We have the encounter of Moses. And as we move through the narratives, we go to Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia, we have the encounter of the Babylonians. And prior to that, we have the Akkadian Empire, when we went into Nineveh, if you remember in the video before. So why am I talking about where? The where is important because of the place, the people, and the things in that, as I mentioned in the prior video. So the people are citizens or believers or flag bearers of a certain nation or state the people who live in a territory the family unit the homes the villages the communities the city centers the business the information centers the dispersion of information whether that be trade secrets whether that's war strategies whether that's reproduction whether that's education whether that's healthcare, whatever it is the human interaction is important and that's what we call people because people are representative or in large part are indoctrinated by the activities of their community. So a Zambian is someone who lives in Zambia, someone who 
claims a hold or significance to the Zambian flag, someone who perhaps speaks vernacular, whether it's one of the seven major Zambian languages, whether it's Bemba, Chewa, Kaonde, Luvale, uh, Tonga, Lenje, uh, or whichever language you want to speak, or 72 other languages, or someone who is in Shima, and that's their, their state food, someone who is well rehearsed in the, in the spiritual and cultural practices of that region. That's the importance of people and culture. And that's, that finds itself in the Bible. So that's why we're mentioning where. So we have Africa, point one. Point two, apart from people, <clears throat> is the place. Places have significance in the Bible. We have mention of many landforms. We have mention of the river, the river Euphrates, river Tigris, river Nile, the Red Sea, and these water bodies have spiritual significance. The reason why they have spiritual significance is because symbolic, significant spiritual events have happened at these certain places. So apart from knowing where it is the stories take place in the Bible, who was there and activities that were governed by certain people in certain regions, we must also take into account the landmarks and the landscape and the overall impact of an environment on the ideology or the ideas of an individual placed in that environment. So we have Africa. We also have Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. You have to forgive me. Handwriting's poor. Um, you get the point. Aside from that, we have Rome. Uh. And then we also have Greece. Now, when we speak about Rome, what's the significance of Rome? We have a Roman Catholic Church. Rome is largely now transcribed or has been translated, transformed into the Vatican Church. And as, as we see through history, the Holy Roman Empire, which is largely controlled by the Vatican, the Pope, and his subordinates, is now still a very powerful organization and controls a lot of the doctrine and the content contained within our Christian canon, which has been compiled over time. <clears throat> the significance of knowing Rome what it is to be Roman is that St. Paul, Saul from the Damascus, the former persecutor of Christians or those followers of Christ, was a Roman citizen. And he had that Roman Greco understanding. And he wrote 13 of the 27 books in the New Testament. The significance of knowing that is there are certain teachings, there are certain attitudes, there are certain understandings of the immaterial, of the metaphysical world that come from a Roman place of uh, engaging with information. So the Roman template forms the basis of a large part of the New Testament. The other side of that is the Greek template, which also finds itself significantly placed in the New Testament, because as we've mentioned before, the New Testament was largely written in Greek, written and translated. So you find a lot of uh, synchronicities with Roman and Greco culture, particularly in the Asians, to do with the early Christians and the early church. And the significance of that is the writers who came from that understanding, who came from those teachings, who came from those churches, who came from those schools of thought, aligned their thoughts in a certain way. They channeled their communication to a Roman audience. They channeled to a Greek audience from a Greek understanding, philosophically, socially, politically, and uh, academically. So with this series, I'm not trying to confuse you, nor am I trying to drown you with the depths of information I have on myself. But I, I think it's important to address the fact that there are many Christians who don't know why they believe in the Bible. They don't even know why the Bible itself is an important document for self-study as a Christian. And the reason for that is it's our common creed. That's one. So it unites us all. It cuts across class, culture, color, country, whatever denomination or separation you want to apply to human civilization. It cuts across all borders. Another reason for that is that it's meant to be a self-help guide. So as you read it, it's meant to inscribe its ideologies into your soul. So meaning by reading certain stories, by reading the stories of people with moral scruples, by learning and emulating the example of Jesus Christ himself, Christ the anointed one who was actually Yeshua. But when you take lead from I'm the way, the truth and the life, and you follow in that line of uh, thinking, that line of reasoning, that realm of being, you become a better person. Not only that, you shine a light on the world because God called for people to love him and to love his creation. You cannot claim to love him without loving his creation because his creation was made in his image and likeness in Mark Day. And with that being said, thank you for listening. 
the next episode we're going to talk about the council of nicaea and this is just going to be a breakdown of who actually dictated the mode within which we access information contained in the bible so the current bible was presently set who decided which books were going to get in and who decided which books weren't thank you for listening i hope this was helpful if not please comment down below and i'll respond to the feedback but otherwise have a good day god bless god is going on thank you